Hey guys, this is gonna be a different episode than what you're used to. Of course, it's still a vlog, but I'm gonna take you on a trip to my butcher because he's got something special for us. Beautiful black Angus cow. And we're gonna take it apart, you and me together. So let's get cracking. So we're here with Kenya and um, okay, he's showing me the pieces that I did order. And that's that's a, it's a trick. It's a trick too. Look at this. The tri tip. Look at the intramuscular fat. Look at the marbling, man. It's insane. And that's the boy, as you Ruba that see, says he toch geen nee. How can I say no? Dude, I gotta have this, even though this doesn't have the fat cap, but this is like a really, really nice piece of meat. In the, in the Netherlands we call this an Asian chip. But this is this is so beautiful. This almost looked like Australian wagon. So I guess I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> now you got something else. Yeah, say it. Now we're gonna get it. Maar dan heb ik bouten in gaan. Ja? Ja, normaal gaan we daar het wild in. Ja. En nu heb ik de twee stukken daar liggen op jou. Zodat uh, niemand anders eruit kan komen. Let's go. Wauw. En dat is wat daar je hoort. Dus hou eens weg. Dit is een homework. Ja, maar dit is een lot of lifting. Ja. En jij zei dat je een zaag had, dus dan. Ja. Ben ik heel erg benieuwd, zeg maar. Ja, als slagen ja. en uh, hoe jij dit gaat leveren. Dus, dus ik ben heel erg benieuwd naar de volgende vlog. En die, die, ik ben de eerste kijker, ik wil dit zien. Ja, ja, ja. So this is the challenge for the day. Do we gaan to fix it? Are you feel confident? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Welcome to the butcher show. <laughs> so first of all, I gotta figure out which cuts I'm gonna make. Of course, I wanna have some of that beautiful ribeye on the bone. Uh, I can already see the skirt sake, the inside skirt sake, which I absolutely love. We're gonna start with what's right here on the inside of the belly. We're just gonna work our way through there and. The very easy thing to do is just to follow the bones and get everything off from the bones. This is the work I like to do. So we already encountered a little bit of meat here that came from the bottom right there. So we're just gonna try and separate that. So get that silver skin off, separate it. What do you guys think? What is this? How do you call that? Because it's not the inside skirt, because that runs over here. I want to separate that hard fat from the meat. Get kind of as much of it as I possibly can without damaging the meat any further. Now I can imagine that, for instance, a butcher would say, this is just for burgers. I'm gonna get rid of it. But to me, it looks like a really interesting piece of beef. Here is where it gets too thin. That's not gonna work out. But this is still an interesting piece of meat. I'm a total beginner at this. I'm in by no means a butcher. But the way I look at it is you can separate the meat easily by just following the lines of the meat. That's how you can separate the cuts. And if it's connected too much, just let your knife run along it, so make sure you have a sharp knife and just let it run along, that's it. That's all you need to do. There we go. And now I can just follow the meat and you can see here I run into some cartilage, that's the end of the bone. That's where the cartilage start on the belly. So we gotta run along that. There we go. Hey, not bad for the first real steak. The inside skirt steak, it's off. Of course, it could do with a little bit of cleaning up. I'm just gonna take that silver skin off. And end it up with a beautiful piece of meat. Now I'm not gonna put this in my dryer jar. I'm just gonna vacuum seal this, throw it in the freezer, and whenever I need a skirt steak, I got a beautiful skirt steak ready to go. 
I cleaned the first part of the belly and I still have some fat, hard fat and hard fat there that I gotta remove. But now I'm looking at where does the bone end and where does it become cartilage? Because I can see the cartilage here and I wanna separate the two. Cartilage here, cartilage there, that needs to go and then I'm gonna cut it off, expose the bone and then I wanna get out a beautiful cut of beef that I can actually put in my dry ager and let it sit for a long period of time. Yeah, there it is. I can already hear my butcher saying, you're holding the knife the wrong way. You gotta put it like this and work your way around it. Yes, I know, I'm sorry. I do apologize, but <laughs> I'm not a butcher yet. Step by step, we're getting there. I'm just gonna look for that bone and the end of the bone, I'm just gonna follow it. I already have one, two bones. And I'm gonna to go to the third one, expose it. And I can see that, that like, where the cartilage connects, there it starts to get white. Do you see? It's, here it's white, and there is the bone is dark red. That's what I'm looking for, like that little end piece, and then somehow I can stick my knife in between, make a little incision and separate the two with a little bit of pressure. I can open it up, see it more clearly, and then it's disconnected. I have to clear the bone off the meat, so basically I'm just gonna take the knife, run it along the bone, but not further than the total depth of the bone. And I'm gonna stop around here. So this is where I wanna leave everything on for dry aging and separate the belly from the actual ribeye. cleared and free and I can easily take that belly off. Gravity is my friend. Now I clear this whole rib rack and now I can start making an incision downwards to separate this whole cut of beef. So I'm just gonna work my way down with the knife. Now you can already see that now I'm getting towards the section where we get to the porterhouse because this is where the tenderloin sits at the back. So this is where the ribs end and the porterhouse begins. Now my butcher showed me a trick once and again he let gravity do its job. So if you come over here, let it come toward me and now you can see that gravity is already doing its job. All I need to do is just take my knife, slowly run it down all the way to the bottom. There we go. Now it ex exposes the breaking point and probably... No. No. This is what I need to do. That's my job. Now look at this intramuscular fat. Absolutely gorgeous. That is one good looking steak. Of course I still need to clean it up, make it look a little better, but that's how it's gonna go in the drive. Mm -hmm. Got these dry aging cabinets sitting here and uh, these are absolute miracle workers for big pieces of meat to dry in. it's kind of like a pro gear but just stick it in there like that and again here I want to make sure I write down the dates because I process so much meat that I have to write down the date just to remember which date I put it in to be exact now it's time to make our porterhouse sticks I'm gonna Place it on the other side. So here, as you remember, is the beef tenderloin. Run on this part, and the beef tenderloin is a very important part of the actual porterhouse. So we go more to this direction. The tenderloin is really, really small. Just check this out. This is just a tiny part. So we're getting more close to the T-bone. But if there's more of this tenderloin on, it's actually the porterhouse steak. Now I've exposed the tenderloin and the T-bone. I'm gonna cut off that belly part. Now I can sit it up straight and let's take a look at this side. 
there you can see this is the beautiful New York strip but with a little bit of tenderloin here so this is actually where the porterhouse start but the best part of that porterhouse sits on this side now it looks more like a car accident than an actual porterhouse steak but we're going to clean that up now a butcher would probably just use a saw at this point but I'm going to go for my knife old fashioned all the way down to the bone and now I just have to use some force and crack this open there you see now I'm not going to call myself a pro but this looks pretty good to me a beautiful porterhouse steak now I'm going to cut this all up into porterhouse steaks and then we're going to vacuum seal this because if you put this in the dry ager you're going to be sorry because you're going to have a big piece of pellicle on something that is absolutely delicious already. There we have the flank stick coming straight out of the, the bottom part of the belly. Beautiful piece of meat, big structure in grain. And I'm gonna clean this up. This is also sometimes mistaken for flat meat or parfait, but in reality, this is the flank steak. And this is the real beef belly. A beautiful piece that I'm gonna be using for a delicious either pochetta or beef bacon, or both, because I got another piece right there. And uh, look at that, this, this could be pochetta, right? Just think of it like this. Oh. Porchetta, beef porchetta. Now we're getting to the interesting part. This is the piece where the brisket lives. Let me show you where what goes. Of course, here we got that ribeye, but here at the bottom of the animal, like the breast, right here, this, that is the brisket. So. I can't screw this one up, I gotta get it right, I gotta get that brisket out, I want some of that belly, I want the ribeye, I want it all! So I'm gonna be careful, work my way through it, and see if we can turn this piece into something beautiful as well. I just had a little consult call with my butcher just to understand properly what I'm doing here and I don't want to screw it up so I just had to make sure. I called him, asked him for the brisket on the bone and as you can see here, this is the end of the brisket. This is the flat. So this is no longer part of the brisket, this is. And all of this, and all of this sitting above and below, that's gonna protect it while they're eye aging. So we can make a cut right here, all the way down to here. And then we're gonna focus on the ribeye. We're going to take off the, the top part here, we're going to leave that out and I'm going to cut out the ribeye because basically it ends right here. So this is only a short piece of the ribeye and I want to clean it up, make it into some good steaks that we can vacuum, then I can get rid of this and then I'm going to focus on the color, which is going to be a challenge, she said. This is not one of the easiest parts to take apart and uh, we'll, just, we'll just have to see how, uh, how we can make this work. So I'm rolling up my sleeves here. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm getting to the scary part. Now, now it's getting sketchy. Oh yeah, definitely. This is this is where you get the the home man, oh, the home the home butcher feeling. This is why the part where I, <laughs> women, women, women live longer than men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on to it. Let's do We're it. We're going in where the brisket ends. All right, this is gonna be our brisket dry aging project. Oh God, this is more than seven kilograms. This must be around 15 to 20. This is more like 20 kilograms. Big boy. Jeez. Oh, okay, look at this up there. <laughs> yes. You got it. Yeah, I got it. There we go. Whew. See you in 100 days. 100 days dry brisket. Now that's the plan. Now it's time to take out this ribeye. I'm just gonna cut it out of the bone. I wanna start it here, right there. And 
and then move all the way here where the rib eye is definitely has ended and then I'm gonna take this and work it work my knife along that bone I'm just gonna take that whole steak out trying to do it as clean as possible and that's why you need a real good deboning knife As you can see, I work my way all the way down there. Just gonna focus on these bones right here. Disconnect all the way to where you made the first incision. And there we go. There we have it. Detached ribeye. Now to get this into proper sticks, we're gonna take this off. Very easy to do, just run my knife along with that piece of meat that sits on the outside, leaving on as much fat as I know how to use your weight and gravity to work for you. There we go. Get this bottom part off. This yellow thing, this, this has got to go. This is like a piece of the back that there's no use whatsoever. And that's just waste. And then I end up with a beautiful ribeye. And now you know what to do. Just make two finger steaks, steaks out of this. There we go. One. Whoa. Two. Three. And four and five. Or just ribeye sticks. Tell me, that doesn't look good. That looks amazing. Beautiful, right? I saw you eyeballing that beautiful rib right there, and that's gonna be our beef ribs. So of course I'm gonna take this off the top, that fat cat that sits here, that this meat that sits on top, that's absolutely no use to me, that's burger meat, but it's not for my beef ribs. And this looks more like it. I'm gonna make an incision and decide, like, look here, you can clearly see it. This is basically where the meat ends. So if a butcher sells you beef ribs and this part of the ribs, like ribs one, two, three, then you're gonna be cheated. From rib four to five, six, seven, eight, that's good beef ribs. So basically, I already don't want this part. This part already has to go. Now, if you know and memorize the number of those ribs, you know what to order and what to get. There we go, all the way down to the bottom. And that's where I'm gonna make my incision, and now I know where to cut. There we go. There we go, beef ribs. Good looking, gorgeous beef ribs doesn't get any better than that. We're now getting to more challenging cuts where things get a little different. US cuts, European cuts, like German cuts, Dutch cuts. A lot of butchers still have different types of cutting and there's some good pieces of meat in here. Like for instance, we got the end of the ribeye here. But I think this is still a pretty good piece. That's probably one of the best pieces you can have from the breast. Of course, it's part of the color, it's part of the neck, the, 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 the big muscles that sit in the neck. No, I don't have the big muscles, but some people do and some cows do. And I want to get that out, so I'm going to cut off the beef ribs here, see if we can salvage some of the beef ribs and, uh, and just see what's, what's underneath, because I just don't want to miss out. And the butcher told me already, he laughed at me, he said, this is where things get tricky. You had the easy part. And in my opinion, I did an amazing job so far. But... All right, there we have it. No clue what this is, except for it's part of the neck and it's really tough and it has a lot of fat on it. No clue, absolutely nothing. Now the next safe bet for me is just to go for the ribs, make sure that I get those right. Like these are like the, the first ribs of the cow. 
And then I want to secure this part. So basically this is going to be like, if a butcher's smart, he's going to cut one single rib out of this and sell it as a single rib. Because you can see that the amount of meat and fat is just one big mess over here. If you look into it from this side, it still has some appeal. Like I could smoke this and this could turn into something really delicious. That bone ends right there. So I'm gonna cut it off, secure this section and try to rescue some of it. So I managed to cut off the cheaper bit of beef ribs. Still a good looking piece, but you end up real flat at the end here while you have a big piece there. So my preference is going for the numbers of beef ribs that are gonna create you beautiful cooked lone slow beef ribs at the end. Stay away from numbers one to four, choose the high numbers. So what I ended up doing is taking this whole piece out of the neck. I decided just to go for the big chunks. Uh, it's gonna be a low and slow piece. This is one I wanna keep. I wanna keep the big chunks and I wanna clean it up a little bit. So I'm so just gonna clean this up, get everything out that doesn't belong in there. there we go. This piece can go. We ended up with a beautiful piece of meat. Probably this is a few sections together. Um, you could take this apart. If I could, if I, if I would follow these fat lines right here and there, I would probably be able to get two to three pieces of meat out of this. However, I would like to keep this as a whole. And um, I really want to cook it as it is, get some salt and pepper on this, and maybe turn this into a Dutch oven pulled beef because that. That's what this looks like to me. Beautiful color, beautiful piece of meat for low and slow sessions. And that's it, the last piece of beef, the beef neck. And there's a big spine still running through it, so it's not worth the effort of getting everything off. This is something that I'm gonna to use to make like a good pasta sauce that's gonna simmer for five to six hours. So I'm just gonna take it off with my saw and then uh, Job's done. For the thumbnail, we decided to get everything back out, out of the vacuum, out of the cabinet, so we could have an overview. We took this beautiful picture. Definitely worth it. But now we also have an opportunity to look everything we yielded out of the half of a black Angus cow. And look at how all of this goodness. We got a beautiful belly right there. We got the rib roast right there with the New York strips. Of course, we got some bone with still a little bit of beef in there. We're gonna either take that all out, turn it into burgers, or just use it to create a beautiful beef stock. We got a neck, we got some tenderloin, we got buffet flank steak, flat meat, beef ribs, more beef ribs, the uh, brisket that we're gonna be dry aging for 100 days, and of course, the beautiful porterhouse. Ribeye steaks, we got so much good stuff. All of that goodness, just laying right here at the table. Now we can pack it up again. But thank you for watching, thank you for being with us and enjoying this vlog on taking apart the Black Angus Cow. You're gonna be seeing all of this back in the videos, recipe videos on pitmasterx.com. Don't forget to call and check out our website. Say bye-bye, uh, Mitchell. Bye-bye, man. Doei. Tot de volgende keer. Doei.